when Salut Dissan wake up and um, get out and feel the sun. These are all statements being made by the elderly, most especially whenever they want to take the sun bath. Welcome to Reflections. My name is Yusuf Darab Usman. Every week on this uh, program, we invite personalities into our studios and we like to talk about themselves. And that was not really my way. My personality this week really woke up to the sun and of course got himself really brightly shone on for over 90 years. He is a politician. He is a businessman. He is of course a teacher which he really wants to be referred to. And above all, he was Nigeria's ambassador to Switzerland. He is a member of the, or rather the officer of the Order of the Niger. My personality, as I said, is 92 years old. And then um, he is no other person but um, yeah, yeah, um, that name is superb in politics in Nigeria, especially in the Middle Belt area, talking about when you plateau state down to plateau state today. Welcome to Reflections once again. Welcome to Reflection, sir. Thank you very much, indeed. We would want to hear from you, at least in your own words now, who Yahya Kwande is. Yahya Kwande is a village boy, born in a faraway village in the southern part of Plateau State. I wouldn't be able to be sure of the date of my birth because None of my parents or relatives, 90 years ago, was wise to record the date of my birth. Right. But I'm sure I'm either one year plus the 92 I talk about, mm -hmm. or minus one year. Plus minus one. So therefore, I am 92, and it appears walking backwards, I discovered that I am definitely 92 plus minus one. So I couldn't make a mistake than one. Right. So therefore, and I schooled with the Roman Catholic school in uh, and the, the only missionary, the only school was a missionary school, the Catholic Mission School. And from there, then I moved to Shandam again, another Roman Catholic school, where I was then taken to Joss in Rio to be taught how to teach. An auxiliary teacher helping qualified teachers then. From Rio, Rio, which is now local government, I went to Toro Teachers Training College. After assisting in Wase Primary School as an auxiliary teacher, then in Toro, I then qualified as a grade four teacher with a grade four teaching certificate. Then I came back again and taught. From there, I went to Bochi, still in exactly the same profession, and got a certificate, grade three certificate. From Moji, I went to Katsina High Teachers College. And after my training, may surprise you, while I was still in the examination room, I received a letter from my native authority in Shandam, Lowland Federation then, appointing me as administrative secretary. While you were there? While I was there. Mm. So I finished my Higher teachers training only to move out of teaching profession. And 
and I started administrative service in my native authority as council secretary and administrative secretary. Can you remember the date? That 1955, right. when I joined Native Authority. Uh, then from there, I would say luck. Because while I was in Casina, I married a princess, the daughter of was here in Katsina, junior sister to Alhaji Issa Kaita, who was then the Northern Region Minister of Education. Then from the Akasa Mudarikima, then I brought her home, and Issa Kaita assisted me when Michael Audububa, my cousin, was appointed a junior minister. So I was asked to join him in Kaduna as his private secretary. And at the same time, I was on the rank of administrative officer class four, which was very popularly known as ADO assistant district officer. I was sent to ABU for administrative training course for a year and was posted to come as an administrative officer class four. That's where my life actually began because that was the time when Muhammad Sanusi was Emir, a very powerful Emir. And I was posted to look after the administrative uh, area of Kano City, Sabongari, Wagwalwa, Taroni, and all the other suburbs. After being an administrative uh, officer in Kano, then I was invited by the regional government and I was appointed in 1961 to organize Northern Nigerian general election. Very junior officer because of trusts. So Donna invited me. You know what I mean. So I got into organizing the, the election in Northern Nigeria. I'm very happy to report today because I was also appointed as Secretary of Electoral Commission at that particular period. After which I help in assisting in even the census at that particular year. 1963. Yeah, 1963. From there, Sedona then one day invited me and said, yeah, hi, yeah. I'm sending you to to take over from one of my cousins, he said then. I was posted as divisional officer. I was in charge of Kontogora, Zuru, and Ushishi. Those were three component units that formed Kondogora Native Authority area. Then when I came back from Oxford, I was then sent to Bolu province. The actual specific posting was Potasco. I went to FICA Native Authority. While I was in FICA, 
I was also in charge of view. From Potter's Home, I went to Meduguri. I was in charge of Meduguri. I became senior district officer in Meduguri. And at the time, I served as acting provincial secretary. It was from Meduguri that I came back to Kaduna. I was just visualizing you all to as you are talking, looking at you from all over northern Nigeria. Of course. On all the places now. You've yes. seen the north and you've known the north very much in those days. Correct. Right. And uh, you were very close to Sadona, I can see from what you're saying, because there are instances where he asked you for advice and he posted you to sensitive places and you've been doing that. He was killed. How did you feel when he was killed? I was in Potter School. Then I arrested an, a, a counselor of finance, put him to prison for seven years. Why? For embezzling mm -hmm. Native authorities' money. Well, it was only uh, the one I discovered myself before they sent in the English uh, traveling auditor okay. to investigate. And being a profession, he got more than what I did. It was it's a wonderful incident. That year, was anniversary for 25 years of the Emir of Fika. And Sadona was in attendance. We were sitting down with him. I was dressed up, you know, we used to have uniform. Okay. Administrative officers uniform. Then the district heads were parading and showing the mightiness and popularity within their area of jurisdiction. One of them came out pertinently with horses behind him, well dressed. Sadona so turned to me and said, Yahaya, who is this man? I will name him and I said he is the counselor of finance. That's a donor said to me, Councillor of Finance, yeah, yeah. That's what he said. I said, yes, sir, Councillor of Finance. He turned his face and said nothing. But to me, it was an instruction. So the, when the ceremony was over, I went into the treasury to have a surprise check and discovered that the man was they would money. That's why when I got in, mm. we were talking about Northern Nigerian mm. signature mm. of Dagi, mm. a band that you see on our gowns. Yes. If you are not careful and you get into the net, you won't get out. There's no way. Because you don't know the beginning and there's no end. It was there that I discovered that was embezzling money. The way he was handling me. Then wonderfully, I mentioned that he, if you get into the native authority then you don't know who was who, who was connected with who. When I asked the chief of police to arrest him. The chief of police was his brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. When I took him to the chief al Kali, I discovered that they were cousins. Mm -hmm. And the counselor himself was marrying the Emir, Emir's most favorite last-born daughter. Mm -hmm. So he was connected, all of them. So by the time I know that I, 
the accuser become the accused. So they decided now that I was wrong. Then they sent petition against me. And I was being investigated until I was taken back to, to Kaduna. And the night Sadona was killed, the report had come out to vindicate me being innocent. Otherwise, I missed promotion in the ladder almost two times because my colleagues were then almost acting permanent secretary, deputy permanent secretary. I was still senior district officer because of that investigation. Until that day, I was with Gidaro Idris, with Abu Bakar Umar, Wadim Bochi, because usually every evening some of us go to Sadona's house to eat on our dinner. And young men as we were then, we wanted to go to cinema. But Sadona couldn't start the food so that we can finish and disappear into the city. Mm -hmm. It was there that I saw the meeting of ministers and when Akintola arrived and left. That night, Sadona called me and said, yeah, yeah. He said, um, the investigation, the inquiry into the, your affairs in Butters School has indicated you to be innocent. And then he gave me a car mm -hmm. and gave me 5,000. I left him. When I reached home, only about an hour or two, I saw some ministers standing in front, Sanke Maska, Michael Arububa, Tijani Hashi. I left there. When I told my cousin, thank Sandona for me. He has just given me this, and he has also told me that I have been exterminated in the affair of this. Then he started shouting, we in the middle bed, you are all this and that. So Sergei Moska said, no, your cousin is telling you how happy he is, the case of him is finished, and you are now shouting. You want to make him, make it worse? I went home only an hour after Sadona was killed. Just one hour? Yes, definitely. And then Michael Alpuma, I only knew it when I was inside my bedroom. Someone was knocking at my door. It was Michael Alpuma, a minister from Plato State. Mm -hmm. I looked. He said, Sadona is killed. Anyway, I told you how the sequence of events in my life will confuse you if you touch me somewhere. It is a story. Let me leave that. I'll come back. To but that was devastating from all indications. Having to live, you know, living somewhere just an hour or two, that and you found out that he's dead. Somebody very close to you as a confidant like that. Definitely. And he even, let me tell you, I have been thinking that generous as Sadona was. I said, if not because of that, I would tell you that I must have been the last person Sadona gave something to, some, a gift. Yeah. But because he was so generous, that probably after I left him, he must have given some people also a gift. Otherwise, I would say I was the last one. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us about the war. You mentioned the now, at least you know, in that season, talking about 65, 66, 67, yes. up to 68. 
Yes, I left <coughs> when I was 70. 70 there about. I was, and then one day, Mr. J.D. Bomok was then the military governor of Plato, Benway Plato State. Mm -hmm. And when we were short of qualified administrative officers, because after the creation of state, and in 1968, we were then to go back to our homes of origin, places of origin. Yeah. Then only few of us were in the cut in the in the hierarchy of manning some sensitive places. So very junior, we had to conduct a course of two weeks only to produce administrative officers. And we send them out to be DO, Chandam, DO, Lafia, DO, this, DO, this. But they weren't doing very well. So one day, Gomak said, no. Those of us that were in the service and know what was divisional administration should go out first for one year and set the place before we come in. I was permanent secretary mm -hmm. and then later on I was posted as senior district officer. So I went to go. To, to, that was the issue. The, we were in the preliminary training to set up the division because uh, people were, we have, particularly on the plateau, we came out with very way more staff, qualified staff from Benway than from Plato. And so another problem <laughs> was beginning until we again, I was part of it, uh, separated. Then we left Benway. Later on, we left Latvia. And now we are plateau. Okay, in, in, in that regard, sir, I would want you to shed more light on how it was then, what you went through during the Civil War. Well, you know, we find it very difficult to say the truth. It was a different service altogether. Mm -hmm. And we find it difficult to talk to the younger generation whether what we tell them now was actually happening. Because they couldn't believe it. Mm. We were servants of government and servants of people. Mm. Believe me sincerely, we were civil servants that were devoted to our duties, even though the atmosphere was so tense. Because at that time, with uh, the southern, particularly the Igbos, mm. from the north, moving south, mm. and the northerners also trying to move up mm. to the north. You couldn't trust anybody. We couldn't trust them, they couldn't trust us. So I was in on the border because I was in charge of Otoko and Otoko has a common border with the east. These tribes that I'm telling you, Isis and Isas, and they were very hostile to the people in the Idoma land. So I went there to settle some of our people that ran away to, mostly to Western Nigeria, where they were involved in uh, casual uh, labor to get something to eat because they were driven out of their area by the Igbos. This is uh, where you have a place like uh, um, Ogumane, 
and you have Adler. I don't know whether you know Mr. Dan Agwese. Yeah. That's his home. Mm -hmm. I went there. That was the place I first drank alcohol in my life. Because the water was infested with uh, guinea wall. Mm -hmm. So the only thing we could take was the palm tree, the palm mm -hmm. wine. Yeah. So some of the young men went on and I got one calabash, very sweet. But I got drunk <laughs> because we went there long uh, trekking mm -hmm. from Yubumane to Abila. Mm -hmm. It was about, uh, I think it's 16 miles. And we tracked it with the chief Ojidoma when we were trying to settle the place. We were giving them coals, giving them seeds to begin their life again in 1970, almost at the end of the war. So you asked me, what was it then? You know, the feeling. Surprisingly, even though there was war between us, it wasn't as bad as it is today. The trust. Can you imagine you are at war with somebody? Even the trust between you then is better than what we have today. Because today is worse. You can't compare. Because Even then, I was also a senior district officer of Just Division. Just Division then was all the four local government put together. And I was the one taking some evils and hiding in my house to escape death to such an extent that I had to get an abandoned house, put them inside. When Asika administrator was visiting, because they were trying not to pacify people to accept themselves, so he came in and went in. Even Zip came in and went in. But the relationship was not as bad as it is today, honestly. Nobody would agree with me. You are at war with somebody and you say even in peace time now. In peace time now yeah, yeah, yeah. you had better relationship yeah, than yeah, now. But um you've seen it all sir. You um, you saw how all these things you know unveil, how they all happened. And here you are today testifying to the fact that the trust then was much more than it is now in peace time. What really went wrong? Well, you are now touching me in a place that I'm afraid to talk mm -hmm. about. But I will say it. Go ahead, sir. At nine, at age 92, mm -hmm. it will be difficult for me to say things other than what it is. Believe me, we have no leaders. We used to have leaders. Starting from the village, now we have no leaders. We have simply what you call walkers. People don't respect those who are working in government now. In our days, You are not struggling to be rich because you are either a civil servant or you are a businessman. And if you are a civil servant, then you maintain your position. Nobody doubts you. Even ordinary watch one day, my friend or my cousin, General Martin, who went there for in Congo. He brought me key was a vogue then. Mm -hmm. I went to see my governor. I had to cover. So I don't see it. Because it was the most precious thing then. But as a civil servant, I was already permanent secretary. You're trying to hide it. Why were you trying to hide it? 
because I don't want people to suspect that I was corrupt. They will send that you body with the government. I didn't even sense. buy it. Yes, I they was given, that. but because it was such a precious mm. gift that I didn't want somebody to even accuse me. Can you imagine my colleagues now? In those days, You are, you are not only to be honest, but you are to be seen to be honest. I don't know what that means. We know what is happening really, but I'm just trying to establish to one thing. That is the fact that it's, it's a bad situation now compared to the past. When did we lose track? No, I will blame it on the army. We used to have a federation, Nigerian federation. Mm -hmm. We were taught to know that that was what you used to call Northern Nigeria, Eastern Nigeria, Western Nigeria. And then later on, of course, the uh, Midwestern Nigeria. They were government in their own right. Budget was meant to be a budget. And as soon as you appoint a minister and give him a ministry, he was supposed to be absolutely in control of his ministry. His budget will be passed on to him. We used to have level where even a clerk in your office can make expenditure. A higher one will go to an executive officer to an administrative officer and the minister. When it was about a million, then you have to make a memo and circulate, pass it on to the government. But nowadays, you may think I'm exaggerating. I was in a car with a governor of a state, taking me out in the evening, a friend. His governor, deputy governor, as we were moving out, put his head into his car and said, Please, sir, we have not got even money for tea in my department. Tea. You can imagine whether that deputy governor had the right to give, to execute something for the benefit of the ordinary people in Nigeria, in his domain. Now, why? Why? Was because we were appointed through a process. Now, a governor can make you a permanent secretary tomorrow and dismiss you the following day. Nobody cares. And so, as soon as you are in, what will you do? Try and get as much as possible before you are served. In our days, you make a mistake. I have just told you, it was in 1960, 64, 65 in Bono province, when the incident of arresting the councillor, I also imprisoned a chief judge of Bono province. Still for corruption. Still for corruption too? For corruption. Because I investigated and found him wrong. Mm -hmm. And he was arrested. You can imagine a poor, simple bush boy from Pwande into Bonu. That power, because the government was powerful. Because people trusted him. But now, what is it? What is happening? Even all these emirs and chiefs, I don't want to go into that one because it may affect you. Otherwise, what are they? Decorating dogs? They have no power. Half 
call us a mere kind of is. Because I saw, I don't know what it was. I knew the Emir of Kano as Serki Yanka. Serki Yanka meaning that he can pass judgment for life and death. Today, he will be deceiving himself if he take a decision on ordinary street man. You can ignore him and abuse him and pass, he has nothing. Some of them are so clever. I talked to one of the emirs. We were chatting in Makkah. He said, Yeah, you see, you see what I do in a day? That's the emir. I wake up, dress up, and go to the council. What will be the agenda? Two young people or two bush um, village people will come. And don't give me the bonana, yashika bonana, yashato bonana. I will be sitting down there, first class emir with all the things that make me big. Only to say, magataka da, magataka da kawashi ya kai wudin kansala. That's all I have. They are rather later and give him. And then he will go and meet the councillor. La. Then he will finish all he could. And he will give him another letter back to the MS or to the chief's palace to say we have finished. It is A that is right, it is A that is wrong. And the poor man, not knowing that the emir that he went to had nothing to do with the decision taken to say Munabudia. If it is something to do with even divorce, even on the culture. And these are petty issues, really. But he cannot even do it. Mm. That's what I'm trying to say. They are petty. Okay, now, with this kind of development, you being somebody who has seen it when it was good, who is saying it when it is bad. What would you advise? How do we regain this lost blow? What's your advice to everybody? If Nigeria is ever to be rescued, for you younger generation, we need reorientation. We need to get back to the drawing board and accept our value and stop copying. I would say I attended all the constitutional conferences. I was even one of the 16 people that drew the agenda, Constitutional Conference Commission. We were 16 selected by, uh, appointed by uh, Abacha. When we went and drew the agenda that we had the first conference, constitutional conference, then the second constitutional conference, then the, uh, uh, the reform or something conference. I attended them all. But believe me, why are you paying these chiefs and emirs? Well, you don't need them. And it is because you don't need them, the land is not settled. If you are going to pay them, you have already done you. You are not going to cost government anything. Give them power to help you. Why do you have the upper house in England? Why do you have senators, and they call them elders, council? When you have people here, and particularly now, most of the emirs and chiefs are retired well-educated people. And you keep them to ride horses and gallop to you. So something is wrong. We are not touching on the vital thing that is causing us trouble. I was coming from Abuja to live here, to my village, and then. 
Then I saw a string of women lying, some with babies at their back, with holes on their neck and cutlasses. They went to a farm. I talked to myself. I said, how can we have peace in this country? They gave a commissioner or a permanent secretary or a minister to order for fertilizer so that these poor people looking dirty, black, tired, coming from their farm. And you go and buy fertilizer one for 2,000. So that this ordinary man, and you are sitting in a car that is air conditioned, your house is air conditioned, you have steam water, you have this, you have that, and still you think that if you pass this, you will lose. So you decide to send somebody to buy all. And then the ordinary, these people that I see in line will now come and begin to buy at four, four, four thousand. So that it will make it to 2000. How can this happen and we are in peace in this country? You elect a young teacher that is so good in the village in putting people together for community efforts to develop their village. And he goes to House of Assembly or House of Reps. First journey, when he comes back from it, everybody in the village is now expecting him to feed him, to pay school fees, to pay the, for his health. What does he do? He also will go back and meet the minister that is in charge of overseeing his activities. That is the beginning of corruption. Well, Our blame is not just the official. Our blame is also the ordinary Tanaka mm -hmm. in the village. Their expectation of, of from the from the officials is so bad that this country. That's why I told you we need reorientation. We cannot end this discussion without talking about your Switzerlanders. Just want you to give me an instance, maybe one, of one thing you will never forget out of your possible post. Now, what interested me during my stay in Switzerland is the problem of Nigeria being taken from Nigeria to Switzerland into my embassy. How do you mean? I got there and then found there was a section that was Igbo's, section that was Yoruba's, and section that was Hausa's. Mm -hmm. So I had to get into some problem in such a way that we all had to be summoned back to Nigeria and appear before National Assembly because of the country. Well, the in fight. Some of them were looking for curtains, or one of them said he wanted a bed to change his own bed, so he applied. I rejected it because it was beyond his status. But instead of him seeing me being careful with the money we had, he saw me as a house man. So, all these need reorientation. Even in the um, overseas, mm -hmm. we are still fighting each other mm -hmm. over personal things, not things for the benefit of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And that is what is happening today in Nigeria. People are so greedy, mm -hmm. and we have no leadership. Look at what is happening. We are, I used to like going to my village every week, seeing my people sitting down 
with them, people abusing me, those that we wrestled together, those that we were in school that did not go far, and they see you something you are chatting and you enjoy yourself, forget the world. Going back to your village. Now I can't. I'm so frightened. Insecurity? Insecurity. Mm -hmm. I'm so frightened. And everybody is here. Any movement of your dog or a cat in your house, you are at the window peeping whether they are here. And they bargain with you. With all these gadgets in the world, I had a cousin taken away and he was talking and laughing. No, 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 you can't give us this. No, 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 it's too small. You have money, I know you have a car. This voice could not be trapped. And you say, we have a, a country? We do have a country, really. We have Nigeria. At 90, at a grand age like that, we should think that you are a repository of knowledge, experience, and this and that. So we can't tap you for this experience and advices. What would you advise, really, in this regard, talking about insecurity in this country? Well, you know, I'm sitting down here sulking. Because where do you go? If you report, you are in trouble. I have seen several cases that people dare to report and they ended up being killed. So you just have to keep to yourself. What is happening? Is it our responsibility to devise means of stopping it? No. It isn't. The atmosphere is so bad Government is not trusted. Government does not trust its own people that they are looking after. So we are at this area. If this is an opportunity to talk to government, yeah, I am telling you, believe me sincerely, we need, and it could be done. Mm -hmm. It could be done. What do we need? No, it could be done. In my days, it has been repeated several times. No stranger entered my village without people knowing. We used even to go into the street and say, we have a, a stranger. Please keep to yourself. Be careful. This, this, in a small unit, that small unit should form a bigger unit. We know each other. We know who is coming from where. In just today, a cosmopolitan city, the setup in our days was such that hey, we knew each other. But today, you don't know who is going out, you don't know who is coming in. And whether the leadership cares is another matter. Um, let's finally draw the curtain on this program. We can't really end it up without talking about you as a politician. I know you should have hung, you should have uh, you know hung to your boots now. You don't engage in any political activity. At night you should be an elder statesman, uh, advisor, uh, maybe a kingmaker if possible, and things like that. Maybe younger ones will do that. What advice do you have to politicians in this country? Well, politics is sickness. It's a poison. You never retire from it unless it retires you. At 100, if I still can talk, and you ask me a question, I would say I'm a politician. Go ahead, as a politician, therefore. So, therefore, please. We have means and ways of stopping the greediness of the leadership today. That is number one. They should allow 
the ordinary man to ask you questions. These 10 cars in your house, how did you get them? How did you get there? You don't have to be reported. You don't have to, for somebody not to like you, if you are in a opposition, then they cannot inquire you. No. Anybody that appears, a declare of ordinary men, standing there alone, it should be questioned. If you ask me about my house, how did you build it here? It's a beautiful house. I built this house in 1972. I will tell you the source of my money. If I, they inquired me too, I went into it because I was in charge of a transport corporation on Plato. And after the coup, so everybody that can wear something nice or you can eat in your house, you have not borrowed money, then they think you are corrupt. It's good. Ask me. There are many people today that would have been deterred from corruption if they knew if I do this, I may be asked. No, you come into your village and build the most beautiful house. And nobody asks. No questions, nothing. Then tomorrow you are, and you become now the most popular person. How? How much was your salary? That you can now own 100 properties. Lastly, yeah, yeah, what do you want to be remembered for? I want to be remembered as a humble village boy from Pande by the will of God and to me surprisingly that I found myself in a position in a mighty country like Nigeria being recognized to such an extent that NGA will come to my house and interview me. <laughs> It's our pleasure really to really have that, uh, you know, recognition. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we also need to really thank you so much for being part of this program as well. The discussion has been with uh, Ambassador Yakundi, you know, a uh, household name in, the, in politics in Nigeria, I would say. And uh, next week is going to be another time, another time for another personality who will feature on reflections on behalf of Ambassador Yako and then of course the food. I am Yusuf Dadabu Sunu saying, see you next week.